Yeah. How's being a dad? What's dad life like for you? It's a war zone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We're sleeping some now. Uh, that was like the worst part at first was like every, you know, two or three hours. Like yeah. Like, and like, it's not even as bad for me because it, like he's crying in the middle of the night. I, like, I can't feed him. I can't do anything about it. Right. Um, I know. It's I been, feel, John like, and I were very much like that where it was like, all right, well, there's not much that you can do in the middle of the night. So I'll handle this. I'll man this for now. But yeah, now that Nora's like, sleeping more and she's got it together a little bit more. I'm like, all right, now you can get up and give the baby a bottle in the middle of the night. So we it. tried that like a week ago um, because my wife was like, she, she said like, I haven't slept an entire night all the way through, you know, in three months. Um, so she's like, all right, we made a plan. Like I was gonna get this bottle warm when he woke up in the middle of the night. I was gonna give him the bottle, put him back to sleep, whatever. Um, and it went on for like, it was at least an hour in and he's just screaming, like, won't, won't take the bottle, whatever. And finally, like my wife gets up and comes in the room, like, okay, fine, I'll do it, whatever. And I'm just like, get out. You know what I mean? Like I've been at this for an hour. And, uh, you know, if I put this much time in it, like you're going to sleep, go back to sleep. Um, <laughs> she had to beat him. It didn't work. <laughs> it's unfortunately just kind of the way that it goes. where like, babies want their moms. You know, it, it is what it is. As much work as you guys put in and you put in those like good solid dad hours. Babies just want their moms. They just, oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> sleep is a, a long forgotten thing. What has been, um, I guess, like the biggest revolution with having a baby? Like how, have, how did you have experience with babies before? Because I had none. No, I didn't know anything about babies. Like not anything about babies. So I would like, I got the books. Uh, I read one book and then Bryce uh, Rimsberg, our referee, gave me another book that I read and I would read it and I would think like, oh, wow that's great. Cool. I'm glad I know this. And I'd shut the book. And the next morning, I like, I wouldn't remember any of it. Um, <laughs> so it, like it almost, it, it did nothing. So I had no experience with babies. I might as well have not read the books for as much as I retained. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just trying to figure it out. What about changing diapers? What's the situation there? You, do you have like down pat? Are you like quick on the draw now or like where you at? Well, we're both good. Yeah. It's nice. Boom, 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 boom. I'm a little risky out. though. My wife says like, I take too much time. Like I leave him aired out too much. That's John. Uh, John's like, I'm just letting it breathe a little bit. I'm like, well, that, and that's on you when she shits herself again in a moment. <laughs> you have to though. And I'm, I, I've been pretty successful so far. I've gotten peed on like, just like one or two times. Uh, that's not but bad. I'm, I'm changing his diaper. He's already peed. You know, he's not going to just start peeing again all of a sudden. And Hopefully. he usually doesn't. Hopefully. So I give him a minute. Try to keep take that track time. record right. Um, what uh yeah like for like you and your wife have you guys been able to have any um alone time any romantic time for you and your wife um we have let's see my sister got married this past weekend Ooh. Uh, so i mean we we took him uh and his his grandma uh took care of him for a little bit so we got to kind of be away for a second but honestly it's been three months we haven't had obviously like a night away from him or anything like that yet so yeah oh I couldn't even imagine it would make me like makes my stomach turn to even imagine that I could I'm, not I, I don't know when that's going to happen I don't know I'm not yeah. well I mean I guess I've had you know a night away from <laughs> sure, sure. At, at the hotel uh which I feel terribly guilty about but damn I sleep so good, <laughs> so good. I remember saying that to John because he was like so sad to be leaving I was like as much as I understand I respect that you're sad right now I'm so envious that you are getting a night's sleep with like no distractions in a hotel room. Like that sounds like, that sounds like my absolute dream right now. And sleep is incredible. And I'll always like get like almost the last flight to wherever we go on Tuesday. So, I mean, it's still, I'm, it's pretty late getting in bed, but like, it, it'll be like, just it, as soon as I get in that bed, I'm in. And then as like the latest possible, I can stand to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Um, okay. So I saw on your Instagram the other day, um, are you actually related to the person that invented the Virginia is for lovers tagline? Yeah. And I think probably more closely related than I know. I don't know. My grandpa like knew him, I guess they were like related enough to know each other. Um, I don't know this man. His name is George <laughs> Fultz. I don't know. He was uh, him and I guess some other guy had uh, started, started an advertising agency that came up with it. That's, now the Martin Agency in Richmond in Virginia, uh, which I went on a field trip there when I was in 12th grade 
And I didn't find out until after the fact that like my great cousin had started <laughs> this advertising agency. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, we're distantly related, never spoken. Uh, there's no like, uh, you know, state motto, add money flowing through. <laughs> so I was, I was like really curious about that. I'm like, yeah, like, I wonder if you like get paid for something like that or like what the family is like, that's getting like residuals from something like happy birthday or like jingle bells. Like, how does that go? Happy birthday has got to be a big money maker. Those gotta be. Upset, right? Yeah. I charge people every time they sing it, every party, everyone gets dinged, send in your pennies. They must. They have to. Yeah. They, yeah. That's they a have big to. Money maker. I don't know. The, Virginia's for Lovers uh, probably made somebody some money. I hope so. Well, not you anyways. I I guess you never got any of it. Um, Are you a lover? What kind of romantic advice do you have? Give me some of that. Give me the softer (laughs) side of Hangman. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You must. How long have you and your wife been together? We have uh, kind of since high school. Um, You know, on and off. You know, obviously like high school kids trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, and then started dating when we were in college and got married. I guess I was 25, so we've been married five years. Um, I don't have any, <laughs> it's a bit like I love sitting in the locker room and listen to some of the guys talking about like the girls they're dating or, you know, whatever. <laughs> like I have, I have no idea what any of this is about. I have no concept yeah. of how it works. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have, I don't have dating advice. Um, what about but- like... I don't know. What was like the last romantic thing you did for your wife? I feel like there must be some things and you're not even thinking <laughs> about them or are you just really dropping the ball? Oh man, I don't know. Um, <laughs> hmm. People want some romance from the cowboy. People love a romantic cowboy. You gotta like, we gotta get a little romance happening here. Right, right. Oh, let's see. Wow. Um, I don't know. I wish she could. I wish she would yell out the answer because I don't I know, know. right? <laughs> I want I want to know from her. Cause like I feel like John does like very though I be I feel like if somebody were interviewing John and asked him that, he'd rattle off a bunch of things and like really overtell the story of like a small romantic gesture. He oversells shit big time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm maybe, hopefully I'm underselling by listing nothing. Uh, Terrible. <laughs> like full truth. Um, I don't, I don't know, you know, uh, a romantic gesture isn't always something grand. It's getting up in the middle of the night and trying to give the baby the bottle. Okay. Um, you know, things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I have anything. Wow, fun. you're really disappointing a lot of the ladies that are listening. Oh my right god, now. I know I'm disappointed. And the myself. men, because you should be giving the men pointers. Because who I am mean, I? Who are you? I Have mean, I you done anything been- good lately? Yeah. <laughs> well, what was it? <laughs> my wife's going to get a massage Monday, so I'm taking oh, care. Oh, that's not. That's a- nice. No, I'm not even giving the massage. No, I- but am I? Am I? Am I failed? you're dropping the ball a little bit, but honestly, a massage for your wife. I was actually like kind of putting like hints out like that recently where I was like, "Mm, what I would give for like a spa day. I would love nothing more. So you're doing the right thing. I mean, your wife's shoulders for sure hurt. She's carrying around a baby all the time and everything else that she's doing. So a spa day is a a nice gesture. Right. Okay. Cause you know what, you know, what's bullshit about like when you're what, like when your husband or boyfriend or significant other wants to give you the massage it's nice and all but it always just turns into having sex anyways and you're like as much as that was lovely I just really wanted the massage. <laughs> you just really wanted the massage you wanted to know it was gonna last 60 minutes of massage. Yes. yeah I didn't want a five minute massage and I'm like <laughs> all right what's going on back there this is some bullshit <laughs> okay so you're not into tons of romantic stuff what kind of cowboy shit are you up to um you know a little bit of cowboy shit here and there uh my dad uh my dad's a farmer so he has a farm and they've uh recently built uh kind of like a tree house kind of thing like out in the middle of this cow pasture cool um super cool so we got to spend some time out there recently like after my sister got married we drove out there and out in the middle of this pasture and cooked hot dogs and like little sticks out on the fire and all that stuff um that's nice um just you know, every week checking my little Spotify list and seeing if there's any decent Ooh. you know, music that I want to hear. Okay, where are we at with the music for you? Because I remember you and I spoke before and we were talking about Orville Peck because I feel like he should be way up your alley. You should be waving that Orville Peck flag because he is the best. 
What have you added to your Spotify? He's the absolute best. I have like a whole um, playlist of stuff that I, I put out. Do you, do you like share this with your fans and stuff? Yeah, I did that. I did that. Oh, this was during this. like like early pandemic time when I was sitting at home uh, and no one was going anywhere and I wasn't like wrestling for two months. Yeah, uh, I wanted to do something. So I put together like a Spotify playlist and it's, nice. uh, let's see, it's titled Anxious Millennial Cowboy, all <laughs> in uh, lower caps. So there's a, uh, or lower, lower case, lower cap, lower caps is not a thing, lower case. Lower case. Uh, but yeah, there's plenty of stuff on there. Um, yeah, Orville Peck, 100%. I felt like when I, when I heard his music for the first time, I, I felt like, oh, th- oh, this is what I've been looking for. for yes. For music for, you know, the past five or six years, because I wanted to like country music, but damn, I just didn't uh, until I kind of, you know, fell into to that stuff. Um, down the rabbit hole. Right, yeah, and, and and fell deep down that uh, I guess more alternative country rabbit hole, and I figured I like, sort of oh, yeah, like, like this. I really felt the same way when I heard Orville Peck. My brother had actually introduced me to him, and I was like, oh my god, like I played it, and I was like, this is what I should be listening to all the time. He's so spectacular. Um, what other kind of like new wave country is there that you've gotten into, or do you like kick it old school? Where do you go? Uh, a little mix, a little mix. Like I'm looking at the thing just so that I, I know that I have answers uh, <laughs> right off the, <laughs> the bat. Uh, there's a guy named Dale Hollow. I guess he he opens for Orville a lot of times. Oh, so okay. Cool that, that I really like, and he just sent me like a package of like t-shirts and koozies and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, he's he's super great, super funny, uh, and then it's like some older stuff too. I really like Merle Haggard a lot. I think oh, he's, nice. he's probably like my favorite, like you know, from the past. I guess. Yeah. What about like any like ladies in country? Cause I mean, I'll get down to Shania all day, every day, a little Faith Hill, maybe a little I Reba. Too. I will too. Love uh, I love Dixie Chicks, obviously. Um, and uh, who, oh, there's this girl, uh, Sarah Shook and the oh, Disarmers. I don't know. I just, I like her voice a lot. She's apparently a North Carolina girl too. I didn't, I didn't know that. Like when I, I found her music, but I like her stuff a lot too. That's how I sort of feel about Orville Peck when I was like, oh my God, wait, you're from Canada as well? Like you are my shit. I'm obsessed <laughs> with him. I can't believe that I've not been able to see him in concert, but um, Cash Wheeler went to one of his concerts and he brought me back some Orville Peck merch. So he will always be in my good graces. So he Just told me that about alone. that. This was like the- Well, I told him about that. Oh, you told him about the concert, right? No, I told him about Orville. Okay. So then he went to the car. So this was, I guess, his first AW show. I um when, when they came in I like went up to him and I was like hey how are you how's it like have you met a rural peck before you know what I mean like and went down that rabbit hole with them uh <laughs> it was like the yeah, I would get jealous I would see like Orville Peck putting like the flame emoji is like on all of his photos I'm like what is happening here why like what is this friendship I let me in on it loop me in add me to the group chat I had to I had to find out I got to go to a concert it's been a month or two ago um I like it was like a Tuesday night before Wednesday TV so I changed my flights around whatever and just kind of like like we have a baby like so we couldn't all go so I just like went to a concert by myself it was weird but like not as weird as I thought um but yeah I would have I would have much rather had like my wife there but or someone you know what I mean what did you do do you just like grab a drink at the bar and then like hang against the wall what's like your what's your move Uh, I'm a a wall leaner yeah Yeah. or at least I guess I was because it was just me you know um and then like there were some wrestling fans like I get like as soon as I got there I got in line to get a beer or whatever and there were wrestling fans like right behind me who uh when I realized it was cash only I didn't cash uh so they they bought me they bought me a beer (laughs) Uh, and then I was the wall leaner for the most of the rest of the (laughs) what is your go-to drink I don't know I don't have one whatever is free (laughs) that's usually it uh I am still cheap as hell and I will pay as little as possible for anything that I can so whatever's free whatever's there is is typically uh what I go for now while I can appreciate some frugality you're the AEW world champion you're making some cash have you splurged on anything yet? I bought a, uh, so I, the last pair of boots I bought was like 2017 or 18. Uh, wow. And they're, I mean, they're great. Uh, but I finally splurged and got some Cayman boots. 
Oh, okay. From the same company, it's Quadra. It's like a Mexican boot company. They're the, the absolute like most comfortable thing I've ever worn on any part of my body, any point in my life. It's they're incredible. That was the only thing, and that wasn't even really like a splurge. How much did they cost? Like, what is something like Those that? Those were like a five hundred, six hundred dollar pair of boots. Come yeah, on, that, that's my splurge. Like, I don't, I don't spend money. I stow it away uh, because this does not last long. That's smart. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't spend much money now. No, that is the smart way to go. Truly. Um, I know. I always feel like I like, I, I remind myself that, but I feel like I like reminding other people that as well, because you're right. I mean, this only lasts so long or you find yourself in a pickle where you're like, Oh wait, damn, it was nice making all that money for a bit, but now I've not been doing that for a little while. And you find yourself kind of trying to squirrel away a little cash any way that you can. It can be a little right. scary. I don't want to like live super luxurious for a few yeah. years, I want to live, you know, well for my whole life. For uh, sure. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a stasher. I'm a cash hoarder. Good. That's smart. 